Y News. Malacanang enforces stringent OFW deployment process after lifting total deployment ban to Kuwait. Solon seek impeachment of eight justices who voted to oust former Supreme Court Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. And President Rodrigo Duterte says he will not wage war nor question China's military buildup in the disputed territories in the West Philippine Sea. Philippines, including the UNTV dive team, successfully lay another marker in the Philippine rise. Why News begins now. From the UNTV News and Rescue Command Center in Quezon City, this is Why News. Good evening. President Rodrigo Duterte orders the lifting of the total deployment ban on Filipino workers to Kuwait. However, Malacanang says OFWs will have to go through a more stringent process before they will be allowed to work in the Gulf state. Bernard Dadis will tell us why. President Rodrigo Duterte orders Department of Labor Secretary Silvestre Bellio III to formally lift the deployment ban on overseas Filipino workers to Kuwait. Presidential spokesman Secretary Harry Roque says this is upon the recommendation of Special Envoy to Kuwait, Abdullah Mamao. The government has announced last week the partial lifting of ban for skilled and semi-skilled workers after signing an agreement for FW protection with Kuwait. However, Malacanang says Filipinos wanting to work as domestic helpers will undergo rigid process before they can be deployed to Kuwait. This includes training and studying Kuwaiti culture. Without prejudice to yung additional requirements na po pwedeng i-require ng Secretary of Labor to for those to be deployed as domestic workers to Kuwait. Senator Joel Villanueva, meanwhile, welcomes the move to lift the deployment ban, but he pushes to professionalize the household service workers. The lawmaker is also open to Dolly's plan to launch a 24-7 hotline that migrant workers can contact when they need assistance. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Philippines successfully lays marker in the Philippine rice in an event which formed part of commemorating its awarding as part of the country's exclusive economic zone and extended continental shelf. The marine scientists sent to the area, meanwhile, hope for a long-term research effort. Here's why from Nel Maribuho. Several government officials and a group of marine scientists were off to the Philippine rice following a send-off ceremony on Tuesday by President Rodrigo Duterte in Casiguran, Aurora. For almost 18 hours, the group traveled to reach the location of the second underwater Philippine flag hoisting. In time with the singing of the national anthem, the armed forces of the Philippines flew some of its air assets. While volunteer divers, including the UNTV dive team, laid the country's flag in what officials called as a historical event in the country's continental shelf. The Philippine flag was planted in the shallowest portion of the Philippine rice and the first boy was casted above it. Nandito tayo ngayon sa Philippine rice para sabihin sa lahat ng Pilipino at sa buong mundo, ito ang Philippine rice sa atin ito. Based on research, the undersea plateau is rich in resources and natural gases so many foreign entities have expressed interest in the area. To guard it, President Duterte proclaimed the Benham Bank as a marine protected area declaring 50,000 hectares as a strict protection zone limited to scientific studies. While more than 300 hectares of the 13 million hectare area will be designated as a special fisheries management area. But marine scientist Dr. Hill Jacinto hopes that the research will be for a long haul so the country will benefit more in terms of fishing, meteorology and oceanography. We would really be uh, happy and, and glad if we could institu institutionalize the work uh, that uh, is to be done um, and work here will take us not just a couple of years, it will take decades. The scientists were sent to the area to conduct a mapping survey, investigation and assessment of the coral reef and fisheries stock for six months. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippine Rice. 
President Rodrigo Duterte will not question China's military buildup in the disputed territories in the West Philippine Sea. Here's why from Robbie de Guzman. China's infrastructures and defense equipments are already in place in the disputed territories in the West Philippine Sea. So President Rodrigo Duterte says it is pointless to question China's military buildup in the area. There is an airport. There are missiles that are in stone. There, there are military equipments already in place. So what's, what's the point of questioning whether the planes are land or not? There's an airstrip. Hindi naman gagawin maglanding yan doon sa bato. Maganda ang airstrip nila. In an interview with the media in Malacanang yesterday, Mr. Duterte says that though he can declare war with China, he is not willing to risk his men in a winless battle. I can declare war on China tonight. But sino ang magpunta? Sundalo ko? Pulis ko? Mamatay lang lahat dyan? Sabi nung, why will I go to war or a battle that I cannot win? Para akong ka- President Duterte adds he is willing to discuss why he allowed things to just stay there, but not at this time. He also reiterated that it is useless to fight China when it is impossible to dismantle the structures in the area. You have to take into account, but it would, I would take a longer time to do that. I will discuss with you geopolitics. And why I allow things to just stay there. Uh, di mo na rin mapaalis. Bakit mawahid? Mr. Duterte blamed the Aquino administration for not taking action despite filing and winning the arbitration case against China. There was sufficient time to, for him to stop. Siya yung nagdemanda eh. Eh bakit hindi sila pumunta doon? The UN-backed Permanent Court of Arbitration ruled in favor of the Philippines' claim to exclusive sovereign rights over the South China Sea. The decision was announced on July 12, 2016, days after President Duterte assumed presidency. Despite justifying diplomacy with China, Mr. Duterte vows to insist the arbitral ruling during his term. In front of my entire government, I said, but during my term, I will insist and mention arbitral ruling. Robbie de Guzman, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Malacanang ensures there is no discrimination against women under the Duterte administration. Rosalie Cos tells us why. Gabriela Women's Party slams President Rodrigo Duterte's statement when he was asked about his preference for the next ombudsman and chief justice last night. Of course, it could not be a politician. Lalo na hindi babae. Gabriela says they are perturbed that the form of misogyny sits at the highest seat in the government. However, Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque ensures there is no discrimination against women under the Duterte administration, though he still needs to clarify the President's statements himself. Sa aking uh, pagkakaalam po, wala naman pong diskriminasyon sa kababaihan, kahit sino po po pwedeng maappoint sa ating gobyerno. Some women were appointed by President Duterte in his cabinet, such as former Social Welfare Secretary Judy Tagiwalo, resigned Tourism Secretary Juan Dateo, and the newly installed Secretary Berna Romulo Puyat. However, some known female personalities also opposed President Duterte's several policies, such as Vice President Lenny Robredo, Senator Leila De Lima, Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales, and former Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. Some congressmen are planning to file an impeachment complaint against eight justices who voted to oust Attorney Maria Lourdes Sereno as the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Here's why from Monoxon. 
Akbayan party list representative Tom Villarin and other members of the so-called Magnificent Seven in the lower house plan to lodge an impeachment complaint against the eight justices of Supreme Court. He will file the complaint before the session breaks in June in opposition of the SC ruling to remove former Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno through a co-waranto petition. Villarin stresses there is no other way to remove an impeachable government official but through an impeachment proceeding. He adds that the SC decision was a show of disrespect to an independent body such as the Congress. Villarin and his colleagues will need the support of 98 congressmen to push for the impeachment complaint. Ang isyu nga dito, hindi ni respeto yung Supreme Court, yung Congress na may sole power of impeaching no, an official no, which is mandated under the Constitution. The eight justices who voted in favor of the co to petition of Solicitor General Jose Calida against Sereno were Justices Teresita Leonardo de Castro, Samuel Martires, Noel Tiham, Andres Reyes Jr., Alexander Gesmundo, Diosdado Peralta, Lucas Bersamin, and Francis Hardeleza. Meanwhile, a co-bicol representative Rodel Batocabe says that though he agrees with the sentiments of Villarin, he believes there is no point in questioning the high court's decision. He also adds that an impeachment complaint is now useless and what perhaps needs to be done is to look into the negligence on the part of the Judicial and Bar Council for allowing the appointment of Sereno despite her lack of important documents. Ano ang masasabi kayo ng Korte Suprema doon sa JBC na nagbigay na kulang ng requirements at ang nangyari, nagkaroon tayo ng kaguluhan ng ganito. Batokabe also warns that a repeated filing of impeachment complaint may weaken the credibility of the Supreme Court as an institution. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Bureau of Corrections Director Ronald De La Rosa wants to follow the system implemented by the Philippine National Police in enforcing stricter internal cleansing program inside the National Penitentiary. De Ailagan tells us why. A stricter internal cleansing program. This is what Bureau of Corrections Director Ronald Bato De La Rosa claims he will implement in the National Penitentiary. Walang rehab-rehab sa PNP. Pag positive ka, you scrum. Dismiss ka diritso. Ganun dapat ka stricto ang implementation sa internal cleansing program. De La Rosa says the said aspect of the ongoing reform has been neglected, which is why many Bucor personnel are getting themselves involved with illegal drug syndicates. Bato notes he wants to dismiss Bucor personnel proven to be involved in illegal drug trade. Kung user ka, tapos nag-gugardya ka sa loob, ano pa? O, ano pa? Hindi ka magkipagsabuhatan doon sa mga gumagamit sa loob, yung mga nagnegosyo sa loob. I, don't, I think it's uh, quite impossible na hindi ka ma-involved. With this, De La Rosa orders the accounting of Bucor personnel whose names are in the narco list of President Rodrigo Duterte. The Bucor chief wants to determine if those personnel in the narco list are already facing charges. Ang ginawa sa kanila pala is uh, binigyan sila ng chance na magparehab. Nagparehab daw sila. At accordingly, sabi nila, kahit naipadragtis mo kami sir ngayon, negative na kami. Hindi na kami gumagamit. The Bureau of Corrections has 4,500 personnel. The implementation of the stricter internal cleansing is part of the efforts to address the problem on illegal drugs inside the National Penitentiary. Lega Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue, Muntinlupa City. A commuter group objects the request of jeepney operators to implement surge pricing on jeepney rates. Here's why from Monoxon. The National Council for Commuter Safety and Protection is preparing a petition seeking to oppose the request for surge pricing of jeepney operators. The group explains the jeepney operator's request is unreasonable alongside its petition to increase fares by 2 pesos. It notes approving it will only further burden commuters who ride jeepneys daily. Malaki pa rin yun eh. Malaki pa rin yung piso, tapos meron ka pang price hike na ano, 2 pesos. So magiging 11 pesos pag sakay mo ng jeepney. Eh, kawawang bata na pumapasok sa eskwelahan. Yung baon niya, let's say is only 10 pesos, di hingi pa siya ng 1 peso sa nanay niya. O kung ang kanyang baon ay 15 pesos, 
apat na piso na lang ang kanya para pag, sa pagkain maghapon. Commuters say they have yet to recover from the effects of the train law on the prices of goods, which is why it's unreasonable for the jeepney fares to increase as well. Tignan lang po sa budget kung makakaya, pero iniisip ko parang sakit sa bulsa. Hindi <laughs> po makatarungan. Kasi po, ano, gano'n rin naman po yung, ano, yung kilometro na ano, yung traffic nga lang talaga siya. Hindi naman namin kasalanan yan. Jeepney operators want to implement a surge pricing like what transport network vehicle services do. They seek for a 1 peso increase in the first kilometers every peak hours from 5 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon until 8 in the evening. Jeepney operators cited as reason the hike in the prices of petroleum products. Earlier this week, petroleum prices rose by 1 peso per liter due to events happening overseas. The Department of Energy expects fuel prices to normalize when the supply of petroleum increases. But the very short term, may effect talaga. Uh, so ang perspective na sinasabi namin, pre-recover yan. So the price will balance again. Pwedeng in the near future din, pwedeng may mangyaring supply na kapalit at may baba din naman ang price. However, a consumer group notes nothing can help the public but the cancellation in the implementation of the train law. Lalo mong pinabigat ang pasanin host ng mga consumer dahil nagpataw ang train 1 ng mataas na excise taxes. Kung wala yung excise taxes na yan, hindi ganun kalaki ang impact sa mga presyo na mabiliin. Meanwhile, the LTFRB received the petition of jeepney operators and will schedule the date for its hearing. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. A video posted by an anonymous Boracay resident has gone viral for supposedly capturing an ongoing excavation that resulted in the flattening and deforestation of a mountain in Barangay, Yapak. This led residents to question the rehabilitation efforts of the government, while some turned to social media to seek explanation for the leveling activities. In a statement, Environment Secretary Roy Sematu clarifies that the said flattening of a mountain was conducted prior to the Boracay closure and has since been stopped. He adds he also ordered total stoppage of all constructions and issuance of DNR permits, except those relating to DPWH road widening projects and other licenses. Simano also appeals to the public to verify any reports first so as not to cause any misunderstanding. Malacanang denies Senator Ba Makinus claim that the proposed abolition of the Presidential Commission on Good Government or PCGG could be part of a wider scheme to revise history. Presidential Spokesman Secretary Harry Roque says the Office of the Solicitor General will take on the powers and functions of the PCGG, so there will be no changes. The PCGG was established three decades ago and is tasked to recover the alleged $10 billion worth of the ill-gotten wealth of the Marcoses. So wala pong revisionism dyan dahil lahat ng katungkulan ng PCGG ipagpapatuloy po ng Office of the Solicitor General. Next on Y News. Wish 107.5 FM station wins big in Umalohok 1 Media Awards 2018. PNP responders, Ombudsman Graf Busters gunning for a second consecutive win. And first elephant village in Patay, Thailand offers unique elephant ride experience to tourists. Why News will be right back. Meanwhile, stay tuned for Angel Ocasio III. I'm Darlene Basingan. Good evening. On Why News tonight. Former Supreme Court Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno dares President Duterte to resign. Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency warns public against winning barangay candidates included in the drug watch list. Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission links several high-ranking government officials to jewelry smuggling at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport. 
Senator Cynthia Villar, still the richest member of the Senate, while Senator Antonio Trullanes remains at the bottom of the list according to the Senator's 2017 Salt-In. Good evening. The Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, or PIDEA, warns the public on winning barangay candidates included in the drug watch list. The Department of the Interior and Local Government, or DILG, meantime, confirms that those who won the local election who were in PIDEA's list can still assume office. Here's why from my Bermudas. Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency initial reports state that 26 candidates who ran as barangay chairman and 15 councilmen included in its drug watch list won in May 14 elections. Pidea worries about the retention of these individuals in their posts despite their earlier warnings. And sa akin lang naman, uh, uh, well, yan ang binoto naman tao, di sila magsasuffer niyan. PIDEA also surmises that these winning candidates used in campaign the money they earned from illegal drug activities. There was uh, a, a massive uh, boat buying uh, na nangyari uh, ng barangay elections. And uh, where can they get this money? Uh, I don't know. Maybe drug money circulated and uh, ito ang ginamit nila in boat buying. And since no case has been filed yet, they can still assume their office according to the Department of the Interior and Local Government. What will disqualify them from running and assuming the position is a final conviction, a final ruling from the court. So only if they are convicted of a crime involving moral turpitude and fi tapos, um, it final, yung final and executory yung decision yun, only then can they not assume. From the 200 officials identified by PIDEA, only losing Barangay Captain Alvin Manyalak of Tinajeros, Malabon has been charged. PIDEA expects to file more raps in the coming weeks while closely monitoring those who lost in the past elections. PIDEA also currently validates 274 names linked to illegal drug trading. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission, or PACC, says several high-ranking officials of the government might be involved in jewelry smuggling at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport. Ayoko Miguel tells us why. The Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission, or PACC, believes there is a so-called Padrino and Sundo system happening inside the Ninoy Aquino International Airport Terminal, which allows for smuggling activities to take place. The commission says it has the names of officials involved in smuggling in Naia, with some being officials of the Department of Finance, MIAA, Bureau of Customs, and Department of Justice. Ang kalakaran kasi, basta meron ka lang isang padrinong opisyal, hindi mo kailangan mataas ang opisyal eh. Kasi meron na silang sunduan system, yun ang kalakaran eh. Pag sinundu na ka na dyan, hindi ka napipigilin. Meanwhile, PACC presented a footage showing the handing over of a pouch bag to Customs Flight Supervisor Lumontod Makabando at Naia Terminal 3 last May 5. The bag contains gold jewelry worth 6 million pesos. The bag was owned by the Mimbalawang couple who were alleged smugglers. The PACC says it has been long monitoring the movements of the said customs official. Noting as well the link between Resigned Justice Assistant Secretary Moslemen Makarambon Sr. to the smugglers. Kasi kamag-anak po siya, once, he interviewed once, and then inamin naman po niya na kamag-anak niya yung uh, parang in-law, in-law niya. Makarambon's intervention might be the reason why he was dismissed by President Rodrigo Duterte as the Justice Assistant Secretary. The agency notes Makarambon took the wrong step when he meddled in the smuggling of contrabands of a district collector of customs in Naia. Makarambon should have had confiscated the contrabands and filed charges against the smugglers instead of making them pay duties and taxes. Bellica says the agency is also identifying a big-time organized syndicate behind the illegal activity. Basically, yung matataas official, mga protector. Ganun. Ang kinakailangan nilang foot soldier, yung mga nasa ibaba, mga examiners, mga supervisors. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Senator Cynthia Villar is still the richest senator in the country, while Senator Antonio Trillanes IV remains the least wealthy according to their 2017 Statement of Assets, Liabilities and Net Worth or SALN. 
Here's why from John Anno. In the fourth consecutive time, Senator Cynthia Villar tops the list of richest senators according to their 2017 Statement of Assets, Liabilities and Net Worth or sal -ins. Villar's net worth is higher by $5.2 million than the previous year and declared zero liabilities. She is followed by Senator Manny Pacquiao who declared a net worth of more than 2 billion pesos with over 129 million pesos in liabilities. Senator Ralph Recto ranks third with more than 538 million pesos net worth, followed by Senator Juan Miguel Zubiri with total net worth of 152 million pesos. Senator Sonny Angara lands on fifth place, who declared a net worth of 131 million pesos, followed by Senate Minority Leader Franklin Drilon with over 93 million pesos. Seventh in the list is Senator Grace Poe with more than 90 million pesos net worth, followed by Senators Win Gatchalian, J.V. Ejercito, and Richard Gordon. Senate President Coco Pimentel falls on 18th place, while Senate Majority Floor Leader Tito Soto III is on 11th place. Senator Antonio Trillanes IV is the least wealthy with a net worth of 6 million pesos, following detained Senator Leila de Lima with 7 million pesos. Joe Anano, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. Another group launches a new movement encouraging special assistance to the President Christopher Bongo to run for the Senate next year. Here's why from Ray Pelayo. Supporters of special assistance to the President Christopher Bongo gathered today in Club Filipino in Green Hills to launch Sulong Ampag Unlad or SAP movement which aims to encourage Go to pursue senatorial election in 2019. Some 600 former and current government officials from different parts of the country joined the representatives of various non-governmental organizations and businessmen in forming the group. Former Caloocan Representative Mitch Kahayon Uy, the movement's chairperson, says they have seen Go's potential, especially with the way he presented himself and answered criticisms during Senate probe on the controversial 15.7 billion peso frigate deal of the Philippine Navy. They trust on Go's abilities to push the policies of President Rodrigo Duterte. Sabi namin, yung palang maaari palang mangyari na yung mga administrasyon Duterte ay pwede pang maipagpatuloy hanggang sa Senado through sa bonggos. Kahayon Uy says members willingly contributed monetary support to form the movement and that they are still accepting membership to further support Go. Go was not able to attend the launching as he was with the President. Nevertheless, Secretary Martin Andanar of the Presidential Communications Operations Office represented him and conveyed his message to his supporters. Andanar says Go is still contemplating on whether or not he would consider the offer to run in the senatorial race while he monitors how his ranking plays in the surveys. Andanar adds that being the president's direct link to the people, Go vows to continue the president's campaign against illegal drugs and criminality and support his anti-poverty efforts. Therefore, kung siya po ang tulay sa presidente, si Secretary Bongo din po, ang tulay sa taong nagre-represent ng pagbabago. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, San Juan City. Austin Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno asked President Rodrigo Duterte to step down as the country's chief executive. This as she reacts over the repeated statements of the president that he will resign once it was proven that he is behind the ouster plots against Sereno. My Bermudas will tell us why. A fiercer former Supreme Court Chief Justice faces the public in an event organized by Manlaban sa EJK and Integrated Bar of the Philippines. In her speech, Sereno dares President Rodrigo Duterte to resign a day after the chief executive said he would quit the presidency if anyone could prove that he had a role behind Sereno's ouster. Galing sa kanyang bibig ang, ang pag-amin na siya ang pasimula at mag Pupulsigi sa pagtanggal sa akin. Pwes, yun ang pangulo, mag-resign ka na. She cited Duterte as marking of himself as her enemy in response to her question on why the Solicitor General filed the ouster petition against her. She also criticized the President's policies and described his alliance with China as worrisome as it implies that it serves as government's protection to retain Duterte in power. Kung kayo naman po, bala, sinabi ng Pangulo, hindi siya mag tatanggal sa pwesto kasi sinag, siniguro ni ginoong Xi Jinping ang pangulo ng China na hindi siya matatanggal pagkat siya ay proprotektahan. 
Eh di sana pala, pumunta rin ako kay ginoong Xi Jinping. She also slammed the president when he said he would not prefer a politician nor a woman to become the country's next chief justice. Kailangan niyang irespeto ang pantay na pantay na karapatan, oportunidad at estado sa buhay ng babae at lalaki. She also maintains that only the Senate, as the impeachment court, has the sole power to remove an impeachable officer. Malacanang meantime refused to comment on Sereno's remarks, saying she has the right to express her opinion as a private individual. My Bermuda is UNTV News and Rescue, Pasig City. Fourteen senators signed a resolution urging the Supreme Court to review its decision, granting the co-waranto petition against former Supreme Court Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. Joe Annano tells us why. 14 senators signed the resolution number 738 that urges the Supreme Court to review its decision on the ouster of former Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. Those who signed the document are Senate Minority Leader Franklin Drilon, Senate Pro Tempore Ralph Recto, Senator Bam Aquino, Senator Risa Ontiveros, Senator Francis Pangilinan, Senator Leila Dilima, and Senator Antonio Trillanes. Some members of the minority bloc also inked the resolution, including Senator Francis Escudero, Senator Sherwin Gatchalian, Joel Villanueva, Sunny Angara, Grace Po, and Lauren Legarda. Even Administration Ally Senate President Coco Pimentel also expressed his support for the said resolution. However, Senator Gringo Nasan is not in favor of the said move. He says the process of impeachment in Congress is still ongoing, which is why the Senate could not intervene. Mahirap yung sumama ka pa sa ingay dahil hindi pa nga tapos yung proseso. At saka bakit natin pagsasabungin yung Senado at saka yung Judiciary, yung Supreme Court? Aside from Unasan, other senators who did not sign the resolution are Senate Majority Leader Tito Soto III, Senator Nancy Binay, Senator Panfilo Lacson, Manny Pacquiao, Senator Cynthia Villar, Richard Gordon, and Juan Miguel Zubiri. Meanwhile, Malacanang vows not to meddle in Senate's move that questions the decision of the Supreme Court against its former top magistrate. The senators are free to sign such a resolution. The resolution, of course, forms part of their inherent legislative powers. Um, but we also note the statement of Secretary Ping Lacson that uh, it appears to be premature because no articles of impeachment has been forwarded to the Senate. Since majority of senators support the resolution, Drilon says Sereno can use the document for her motion for reconsideration, appealing the High Tribunal's decision to oust her. Joan Anu, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. A heart-stopping match is expected between PNP responders and Ombudsman Graf Busters in their upcoming battle in the UNTV Cup executive face-off this Sunday. Here's Bernard Dadis to tell us why. Another action-filled battle in the hard court is in the offing as the PNP responders face off with the Ombudsman Grubbusters this Sunday. Both teams displayed quick offenses in their respective first games of the UNTV Cup off-season executive face-off on May 6 with PNP responders edging out reigning champion AFP Cavaliers to tally their first win 1962. While Ombudsman Grubbusters showed off their heavy firepower when it clipped Malacanang PSC Kamao last week by scoring 76-57. And at the heels of their first off-season triumph, the Grubbusters bound to step up offense plays to match the higher endurance levels of police journals and colonels headed by PNP Chief Oscar Albayaldi himself. We are just telling the guys to continue to improve, especially stamina. Namin. Kami nagpractice, uh, pinaghandaan namin ito. Hopefully, uh, manalo kami ng this year. The PNP and Ombudsman Cagers will fire up the second game this Sunday, 3:30 in the afternoon at the Pasig City Sports Center. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Wish 1075 is a big winner at the Umalohokwan Media Awards 2018. Leslie Longbo and tells us why. Umalohok 
Kwan Media Awards 2018 recognized outstanding media programs, personalities, and organizations in the country yesterday. Uma Lohokwan is the official award-giving body of the Lyceum of the Philippines University, which hailed Wish 1075 as the FM Station of the Year. Bigyan po natin ang isang masigabong palaktakan, ang 107.5 Wish. Wish FM has been known for its various innovations in the music industry. Just like the first and only FM booth on wheels, the Wish Bus, as well as its projects incorporating public service such as the Wish Music Awards that helps the winner's chosen beneficiaries. It's so amazing how Wish has come in just almost four years and um, being a part of this really is overwhelming and um, we're just really thankful for this recognition. Wish FM also received special citation for its YouTube channel that now garnered 2.6 million subscribers and almost 1 billion views. Being part of Wish is so humbling because it's a, a transcendent station and the reason why it's transcendent is because of a true rock star in broadcasting in Kuya Daniel Razon and I'm just really proud to be working under his supervision. Kaya congrats to Wish and to God be the glory. Leslie Longbowen, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. For those seeking a new adventure, you might want to try visiting a village in Pattaya, Thailand for a close and unique encounter with a magnificent yet gentle elephant. Brian Evangelista will tell us why. over 20 hectares of land in Pattaya, Thailand, you will see these giant yet gentle creatures freely roaming around. This elephant village was established in 1973 to provide safe haven for elephants formerly begging and working on the streets for survival. Nitaya Pairat Kayakham, the managing director of the Pattaya Elephant Village, says they provided this sanctuary where elephants may live out their lives with freedom and dignity. And though they open their gates to tourists, visiting this elephant village will not only provide a close encounter by having a unique elephant ride experience, it also a lifesaver as the fees paid by the tourists contribute to the survival of the elephants both now and in the future. How do I start this? The reason is just want to help the elephant. I don't like the elephant to walk along the street. I don't like the elephant to walk and get something like begging money from the people. I want the elephant to get the money by that surviving themselves, assisting by people. These mammals weigh around three to five tons and can carry things weighing one tenth of their body or around 300 to 500 kilos. So carrying two or three humans on their back feels nothing to them. Around 21 elephants are being protected in this village in Pattaya. In a day, they eat a total 200 kilograms of fruits, vegetables, and grass and drink 100 liters of water aside from vitamins. So caring for them is never easy. I need help from your country. I need help from the Filipino, Filipina, everybody. And uh, whenever you need to come, please come and think in about to help the elephant and helping tourist business of Thailand. If you wish to have a unique and unforgettable adventure, come and visit this village in Pattaya and mingle with these gentle mammals created by the Almighty. Brian Evangelista, UNTV News and Rescue, Pattaya, Thailand. Up next on Y News. Life in Damascus gradually goes back to normal after years of war. Police to enforce tight security on the wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Merkel. And a bakery in Windsor serves up cappuccinos with frothy portrait of royal couples. Reason to deliver to you as they unfold. I'm Angelo Castro III and this is why new? Stay tuned for William Theo. Good evening.
Good evening. Here are the headlines on Y News Tonight. President Rodrigo Duterte orders Department of Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III to lift the deployment ban on overseas Filipino workers to Kuwait. Presidential spokesman Secretary Harry Roque says this is upon the recommendation of Special Envoy to Kuwait Abdullah Mama O. However, Filipinos wanting to work as domestic helpers will undergo stringent processes before they can be deployed to Kuwait, including training and studying the Kuwaiti culture. Without prejudice to yung additional requirements na po pwedeng i-require ng Secretary of Labor to, for those to be deployed as domestic workers to Kuwait. The diplomatic ties between Kuwait and the Philippines is going back to normal. Labor attaché Resti de la Fuente explains having a good relationship with Kuwait is a key for further protecting Filipino workers in the Gulf state. He says the lifting of the OFW deployment ban covers the entire Kuwaiti labor sector. De La Fuente notes Kuwait was able to comply with the conditions set by President Rodrigo Duterte. Yung mga kondisyon ay binigay ng ating Pangulo na magkaroon ng uh, Memorandum of, Under, of uh, Agreement at uh, ganun din yung mga ipinangako na ikinumit na mga pagbabago, mga measures, mga mekanismo para sa higit na mabilis na aksyon doon sa mga complaints ng ating workers at ganun din doon sa mga creative ways para sa ganoon eh, higit na mabigyan ng proteksyon ng OFWs. De La Fuente, together with the special envoy Abdullah Mama O, will be meeting with their counterparts in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to discuss the total lifting of deployment ban. <music> Ousted Supreme Court Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno dares President Rodrigo Duterte to resign. In her speech during an event organized by Manlabansa EJK and Integrated Bar of the Philippines, Sereno says Duterte should just resign instead of waiting for anyone to prove that he had a role in her ouster. Galing sa kanyang bibig ang, nag, ang pag-amin na siya ang pasimula at magpupursigi sa pagtanggal sa akin. Pwes, ginong Pangulo, mag-resign ka na. Sereno also slams the president's policies and describes his alliance with China as worrisome as it implies that it serves as government's protection to retain Duterte in power. She also criticized the chief executive's male preference for ombudsman and chief justice posts, saying he should respect equal rights and opportunities for men and women. Some congressmen are planning to file an impeachment complaint against eight justices who voted to oust attorney Maria Lourdes Sereno as chief justice of the Supreme Court. The members of the so-called Magnificent Seven in the lower house stressed that there is no other way to remove an impeachable government official but through an impeachment proceeding. The group plans to lodge the complaint before the session breaks in June. Ang issue nga dito, hindi ni respeto yung Supreme Court yung Congress na may sole power of impeaching no, an official no, which is mandated under the Constitution. President Rodrigo Duterte confirms the presence of Chinese aircrafts and equipment in the disputed territories in the West Philippine Sea. However, the chief executive says it is pointless to question China over its military build-up in the area. Though he can declare a war, the president says he is not willing to risk his men in a winless battle. I can declare war on China tonight. But sino ang magpunta? Sundalo ko? Pulis ko? Mamatay lang lahat dyan? Sinabi nung, why will I go to war or a battle that I cannot win? Para akong ka... The president blamed the Aquino administration for not taking action despite filing and winning the arbitration case against China in 2016. And despite justifying diplomacy with China, Duterte vows to insist the arbitral ruling during his term. The Philippines successfully lays another marker in the Philippine rise. In an event which forms part of commemorating its awarding as part of the country's exclusive economic zone, and extended continental shelf, divers planted a Philippine flag and casted the first boy in the shallowest portion of the Benham Bank. 
The UN TV dive team joined the event to document the underwater flag hoisting. Nandito tayo ngayon sa Philippine Rice para sabihin sa lahat ng Pilipino at sa buong mundo, ito ang Philippine Rice sa atin ito. A group of marine scientists were also sent to the area to conduct a mapping survey and assess the coral reef and fishery stock for six months. The scientists, however, hope for a long-term research effort so the country will benefit more from the resource-rich area. The Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, or PDEA, warns the public on winning barangay candidates included in the drug watch list. PDEA's initial report shows 26 candidates who ran as barangay chairman and 15 councilmen included in the narco list won in May 14 elections. PDEA worries about the retention of these individuals in their posts despite their earlier warnings. And sa akin lang naman, uh, uh, well, yan ang binoto ng mga tao, di sila magsasuffer niyan. And since no case has yet been filed, the Department of the Interior and Local Government says they can still assume their office. What will disqualify them from running and assuming the position is a final conviction, a final ruling from the court. So only if they are convicted of a crime involving moral turpitude and fi tapos, um, it ha final, yung final and executory yung decision yun, only then can they not assume. In the fourth consecutive time, Senator Cynthia Villar tops the list of richest senators according to their 2017 Statement of Assets, Liabilities and Net Worth, or SALENS. Villar's net worth is higher by 5.2 million than the previous year and declared zero liabilities. She is followed by Senator Manny Pacquiao who declared a net worth of more than 2 billion pesos with over 129 million pesos in liabilities. Senator Ralph Rector ranks third with more than 538 million pesos net worth, followed by Senator Juan Miguel Zubiri with a total net worth of 152 million pesos. Senator Antonio Trillanes IV is the last wealthy, is the least wealthy rather, with a net worth of 6 million pesos, following detained Senator Lila de Lima with 7 million pesos. And for the news abroad, here's Jovic Vermas from London, United Kingdom. Good afternoon, Jovic. Good evening, William. Malaysian police seized handbags and few other personal items from the home of former Prime Minister Najib Razak in connection with the money laundering probe. Harpal Singh Grewal, the lawyer of the ousted leader, said at least a dozen armed policemen entered in Najib's home late on Wednesday after he returned from prayers at a mosque. The search lasted for over six hours, during which officers were seen taking large bags into the house and later loading them into a truck. Grewal notes the police took some personal possessions, adding that the search was supposed to be under the Money Laundering Act, but police had found nothing incriminating. After several years of clashes between government troops and rebels, life in the war-torn capital of Syria is now returning to normal. Melin Soriano tells us why. Life in the Syrian capital Damascus is gradually returning to normal after rebels laid down their weapons and were evacuated from the city recently. In the town of Babila in southern Damascus, police and other government departments are being restored and refugees who fled the conflict are now returning home. Locals said they had been waiting a long time for the victory. <laughs> Compared with other war-torn areas in the country, Babila suffered less destruction due to the existence of an old truce. But it was not able to protect the town's children from missing years of schooling because of the conflict, negatively impacting both their education and future ambitions. The evacuation of rebels from towns of Beit Sam, Yalda, and Babila in South Damascus was completed on May 10 under a Russian-mediated deal that saw them leaving for rebel-held areas in northern Syria. 
The Syrian military's move to clear the southern rim of Damascus began last month after the rebels in eastern Gotha were evacuated to Idlib under a similar deal. Maylin Soriano, UNTV News and Rescue, Middle East. Fans coming to Windsor to witness the wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle will experience tight security even though there is no known security threat to the event. Giselle Bonifacio will tell us why. Tourists and royal fans snapped up the opportunity to take selfies with waxworks of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle when they made a cameo appearance on Windsor Bridge on Wednesday. With the backdrop of the castle where the royal couple will wed on Saturday, the wax figures from London's Madame Tussauds Museum delighted passersby who smiled and waved Union Jack flags while posing for photos. One of them is Easy Newman who has a particular connection to the couple's big day as she got married in Windsor 20 years ago. I, I feel I should curtsy first, of course, but I mean, they just it is quite remarkable that, that they've just popped over the bridge to have a little look in Eton, which we love. <laughs> the Markle Wax figure was unveiled last week at the London Museum. The waxwork of the prince, originally created to mark his 30th birthday, had been updated with a new beard. Days before the royal wedding, local police said royal fans coming to Windsor to witness the wedding will experience tight security, even though there is no known threat to the event. More than 100,000 people are expected to flock to the gentle town dominated by the Windsor Castle. The people will be aware of the atrocities in in the UK last year, uh, over the last 18 months, and in, and in Europe and on the mainland of you know, all around the world. Um, so that would be the back of people's minds. So you know, we police this um, to keep people safe and we have the capability and the right police officers in the right places with the right skills to deal with all of those eventualities. Britain is on its second highest threat level of severe, meaning an attack by militants is considered highly likely. Last year, there were four deadly attacks blamed on terrorists which claimed 36 lives. Giselle Bonifacio, UNTV, News and Rescue, London, United Kingdom. And those are the latest news from other parts of the globe. Back to you, Will. Thank you very much, Jovic Burmas, live from London, United Kingdom. Outdoor activities may be enjoyed tomorrow. Leslie Longbowen is at the UNTV Weather Center to tell us why. Leslie? Yes, William, fair weather continues to prevail throughout the country. Ridge of High Pressure Area or HPA continues to affect northern Luzon and easterlies are affecting the rest of the country. Partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers will be experienced in Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Today's highest heat index or the temperature people feel is recorded in Sangli Point, Cavite with 46.1 degrees Celsius. Forecast shows temperature in Metro Manila tomorrow will range from 25 to 35 degrees Celsius, 25 to 38 degrees Celsius in Togegarao City, 26 to 33 degrees Celsius in Metro Cebu and 25 to 33 degrees Celsius in Metro Davao. Tomorrow, the sun is expected to rise at 5.28 in the morning. That's weather forecast. Back to you, William. Thank you, Leslie Longbowen from the UNTV Weather Center. Royal wedding fans can now buy commemorative items in huge numbers in Windsor, United Kingdom. Jovic Burmas, tell us why. Whether you love them or hate them, anyone visiting Windsor this week won't be able to escape Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's faces which are emblazoned on merchandise and shops across the picturesque town. Yeah. Wedding themed magnets, mugs and even marmite jars are just some of the items that adorn the aisles and windows of gift shops and high street stores. The couple's popularity has meant tourists and royal fans have been buying the commemorative items in huge numbers. It is a small gift shop titled King and Queen by the entrance to the castle. A steady flow of customers bought their peak of souvenirs. It's not just British royal fans enjoying the frenzy. 
everybody's going crazy. I've got uh, people over from Brazil. We're buying loads and loads of stuff to take back to Brazil. So yeah, everybody's wedding mad. Coffee fans can now celebrate the upcoming royal wedding by sipping a special type of hot drink. Ladies and gentlemen, we give you the Mega Ricino. A bakery in the picturesque town of Windsor is serving up cappuccino and latte coffees, topped with a frotty portrait of the couple. Priced at £4.50 or $6, the drinks are more expensive than usual coffees but were proving popular on Wednesday morning with a steady stream of customers ordering them. I think it's fantastic, but I'm not sure about drinking it. I'm afraid to spoil it. <laughs> but we can't take it with us, so we're going to have to drink it. <laughs> Jovic Bermats, UNTV News and Rescue, London, United Kingdom. Those are the reasons behind the news. May 17, 2018, I am William Theo, and because we need to know, we will always ask why. Thank you for watching Why News.